Hello everyone, my name is Maria Sohn and I am the tech teacher at Stratton School and I also work at Walter Hill School. I'm here today to give you an overview of Google Classroom and working in Google Classroom navigation. Usually in first and second grade, I teach the students how to log in independently. However, this year is a little different and students are going to be learning this virtually. I would like to ask your help and also be able to help you support your students by showing you what is expected and how to log in successfully and find what work they need to complete in Google Classroom. So as always, if you have any questions, you can always email me at msohn at swsdk6.com or you can call the school and leave a message for me. In addition, you can contact your students' teachers. Let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about student sign-in, navigation in Google Classes, and how to turn in an assignment. The first thing is that every student in the Swedesboro Woolwich School District has been assigned a username and password for Google. The username is always an email address. The email address that we use for school is an actual email address. However, we have deactivated the email feature. So students cannot send or receive emails. This is a security feature, which we choose to use because the students are young, they're under 13, and we don't want them to be getting emails. But the username is an email address. So the format of that email address for their username is their lunch number, followed by the at sign, swsdk6.com. On this illustration, I've put X's, four X's, to show that that's where the lunch number will go. This, all lunch numbers are four digits in length, so a student has to have four digits followed by the at sign swsdk6.com for their username. For the password, student passwords are their birthday. We use the, uh, the month, day, year using two digits for each of those items format. So for month, if a student was born in January, the MM would be 01. If they were born on January 1st, 2012, the birth date portion of their password would be 010112, followed by SWSD. There are no spaces in that password. I usually make sure I teach the students that in usernames and passwords, there are not spaces. So if you have a space in there, if you're getting an error, always go back and check to see if you have a space in there because that will cause an error. If you have questions about your username or your student's username or password, you can email me or the student's teacher and we can help you get the correct information. Now let's get started and look at Google Classroom. If, as I am, I'm using a student's Chromebook, at the bottom on the Chromebooks are, is an icon that has Google Classroom. Also on the landing page on a new tab, I have some place where I can pin classes. However, if you're using a um, laptop or a different system, you may not have that. So you can either use the icon or in the address bar, type the URL classroom.google.com. All Google products can be brought up by that URL. If it's classroom.google.com, just press enter and the classrooms will appear. In this case, I'm using a student, um, a, a fictional student. This is not a real student. When, you, when your child logs in, they'll see Google Classroom at the top, and this is the classes page. You'll see cards for each class that the student is enrolled in. Depending on the grade and the way the teacher sets it up, 
you may that your child may have a separate class for each subject. It's a little bit easier to organize that way. Definitely for special areas, you, your child will have a classroom for each of those separately and possibly for language arts, science, and math as well. Across the top of the screen, at the far right, I have students check to make sure they're in the right account. We use shared computers in my computer lab. So in that case, I wanted to make sure they didn't inadvertently sign into someone else's account. At the top, you'll see a circle with an initial in it. That initial is the first initial of your child's name. And if you just hover over it, you'll see the name. In this case, this student name is student is their first name and test is their last name. And underneath there is the username. To navigate Google Classroom, each of these cards represents a different class. So the first time the student is going in, they need to join the class. The teacher has already invited them. They don't get an email because email accounts are not valid or um, activated. So they have to click on join. They click join once. Once they join, you'll notice that the join button is gone. And now to access that class, all they have to do is click on the name. We're gonna use the sample class today where I have assignments and different information that I could share with you and show the organization of Google Classroom. When you click on the class and enter the class, the student will see the name of the class. And there's three tabs up here. One says stream, classwork, and the last one is people. I always tell people not to stay in the stream because stream is not organized by topic or anything else. It's sequential and it's awkward to be able to find things. So I suggest that students click on classwork. On this tab, everything is organized by topics. You'll notice that there's a bold topic heading and then there's items underneath and there's several different topics. Over to the left, I can navigate these topics. If I know that I'm looking for an assignment, I can go down to the Assignments tab, and I can find all the assignments. On this view, I could see that this item, this assignment is due on September 10th, and it's been assigned. If I go down to older ones, and these are missing because I haven't turned them in, there's a due date of July 29th, and it says missing. If a student has completed the assignment, it would look a little different. It would say turned in. We'll look at that in a moment. Also, if I go back to my classwork tab, at the top, it says view your work. This is really helpful for keeping organized and making sure that students turn in all of their work. A student can click on view your work, and this gives a list of all the work that was to be done. This assignment, Getting to Know You, is the one that I showed you on the previous page. It's been assigned and it's due September 10th. If you look down to the next one, the student has turned this in. All of these that were not turned in say missing. And this one has three over four. That particular assignment had a score of four possible, and the student scored three out of four. So for each of these types of items, you could see the student turned this one in late, but you could see the status of each of the assignments. This helps students so that they can manage their time. They can decide when they want to do the assignment, when it needs to be turned in, and how. Going back to the classwork tab. Also, when you go to an assignment, I'm going to go to assignments again. This assignment is the one that I want to do. It's, I know it's due September 10th, but I don't want to wait till the last minute. I need to open the assignment and all I do to open it is click on the name. You'll notice that when the assignment is open on the left, 
it gives you the title, the due date, the category, the number of points it's worth, and the directions. Over to the right, there's the work area. So this says, <clears throat> excuse me, please tell me a story about you. I want to get to know you. So I would like you to tell me anything that you would like me to know. Please include things like what you like, what you're really good at, and what things challenge you. Use the Google Doc below to write your story. It's actually to the right here. When you have completed your work, please be sure to turn it in. So after the student reads that introduction and the instructions, they will go over to your work, click on the document. This will open up the Google document and the student will write their story. I am just going to put gibberish here just to do something on there. They go back to Google Classroom when they're done. They've written their story and now they want to turn it in if they are done. If they aren't ready to turn it in and they want to work on it some more, they just stop here and then they can go back to it at any time. The next thing though, when they are done, they need to click turn in. It'll ask for confirmation. It says, do you want to turn this in? I'm gonna confirm and say turn in. Now your teacher will know that the assignment is ready to be reviewed and the teacher can make any comments and then return it for the student to either make changes or revise in any way. If a student by accident turns in an assignment that should not have been turned in and needs to get back to it, they can click unsubmit. If you say unsubmit, you'll get the document back. You'll be able to click on it and the child will be able to work on it again. When they complete the revisions, they click turn in again, confirm. And now if a student does go and try to uh, change a document that's been submitted, they're gonna get an error message. And it's going to say request edit access. Don't you don't have to request edit access. Just go back and unsubmit it, and the student will be able to re revise the item. I'm going to go back to my classes and in my sample class. Click on classwork again. Once the teacher returns it, the student can always go back to view their work. They could see that they turned this in and this is where their grades would show as well if the teacher is grading or returning it. As always, if you have any questions or need help with anything Google related um, or technology related, please feel free to let me know. I will be glad to help you. My email address is msohn at swsdk6.com or you can send an email to your child's teacher and they will get in contact with me and I'll be glad to help. Thank you and good luck with a new school year.